Officials are telling Americans to be prepared to pay more for energy this winter. Utility bills continue to rise, and now the Biden administration says another spike in gas prices is around the corner. And today's Melina Wisecup breaks it down for us. Melina, usually gas prices go down in the winter time, but now we're being told that these already elevated gas prices could go up again. Uh, what's going on here? Yeah, so the reason why this is possible, according to what the Biden administration is saying, is that after the European Union's drawdown on Russian oil imports uh, goes into effect later this year, that would cause the global price of oil to spike again, and that price spike would be seen here at our gas pumps. So the question is, how do we avoid this from happening or at least lessen its impacts? While many Republicans or those who support domestic energy production would say the answer is to just drill more here in the U.S. and increase our domestic supply of oil, but the Biden administration has a different game plan. Let's listen. Our price cap proposal is designed to both um, lower Russian revenues that they use to support their economy and fight this illegal war, um, while also maintaining Russian oil supplies that will help to um, hold down global oil prices. The U.S., along with other nations in G7, agreed to cap the price of Russian oil with hopes of stabilizing global oil prices. How effective will it be? I, I've heard the plan and I'm really a little confused. That would be like me saying, I want to buy your house, but I'm only going to pay you this much. Russia is still the seller. And so our dictating, well, we won't pay more than that. Their, their simple answer is, well, we won't sell to you. In addition to gas prices, officials are telling Americans to prepare to pay more for your utility bills in the winter and into next year. Part of this is due to natural gas prices increasing and a mismatch between supply and demand. But natural gas production is going up. Places like the Barnett Shale here in Texas, which have been on decline for the last decade, are starting to see upticks in their, their production. So everywhere we're starting to see production come online. Notably, our in-ground storage is caught up and production has come up significantly. So I think that those stratospheric levels are going to be achieved. But when they compare their energy bills this year to their energy bills last year, they're going to notice a profound difference. The good news is that natural gas prices are not expected to go up as much as we previously thought a couple of months ago, but federal officials and experts are still telling Americans they should expect to see higher utility bills this winter. Reporting in Washington, D.C., Melina Weiskup, NTD News. Banks and credit card companies may soon be tracking gun and ammunition purchases. A new merchant code creates a separate category for these purchases. The International Organization for Standardization, or ISO, approved the new category. The ISO is a non-governmental body based in Geneva, Switzerland. It creates standards across various industries, including financial services. New York-based Amalgamated Bank was one of the first banks to request the new code from ISO. Its president says the new code will help them, quote, report suspicious activity and illegal gun sales to authorities without blocking or impeding legal gun sales. Critics of the code say firearm purchases are not necessarily suspicious. The new code means gun purchases made with a credit card can now be tracked and flagged as suspicious. On top of this, the FBI may be using a new tactic to get people to renounce their Second Amendment rights. We had a chance to speak with Luis Valdez, director of Gun Owners of America in Florida. Here's a look. Luis Valdez, thank you so much for joining us on the Capitol Report. It's a pleasure to be here. I, I, I'm always honored to be on your show. And we're happy to have you. Uh, Lewis, there are new reports out from information provided by your organization that the FBI may have been secretly involved in an effort to have Americans waive their gun rights. Uh, what can you tell us about this? So in 2018, 2019 timeframe, we were given copies of uh, documents from the FBI that basically it's just that, that you waive your right to purchase a firearm. Now, uh, through our own internal investigations, we did a uh, Freedom of Information Act request, and it turns out that this is true. What the FBI has been doing is they have been going to individuals that they were investigating for social media posts or things of that sort, and basically they were presenting them the form and saying, hey, look, if you sign here, you know, this all goes away, but you can't purchase a firearm. You, you basically make yourself a prohibited person 
through the NC through the NICS check system, the National Instant Criminal uh, Check System, which we've been vehemently opposed since the very beginning, because 95% of the initial denials are false positives, individuals that are completely law-abiding, but as you know, the federal government, through their bureaucracy and their failures of bureaucracy, blacklist Americans to purchase firearms. And this is the same exact thing as we saw with the, uh, for example, the, uh, the terrorist uh, no-fly list. I mean, remember, um, Senator Ted Kennedy was even listed on that at one point. But since he was a senator, he was able to get himself off. How about every common American? Do they have the same political pull to do the same? No. It sounds like this is uh, heavily focused um, on online discussions and posts. Uh, where is the fine line or balance, if you will, when it comes to following the threats that we see online from potential violent criminals and at the same time respecting your average American's rights? As a 15-year veteran law enforcement officer myself, I understand that you have to investigate credible threats. That's part of a law enforcement officer's job. But doing that doesn't mean that you strip an individual's rights away without due process. You have to do due process first. If an individual is a credible threat, if they have the means, the motive, and the opportunity to carry out that threat, and it's credible, then you pursue charges, you, per, you go to an assistant state, uh, U.S. state attorney's office, you file charges, they review it, and then it goes through its proper procedures. You just don't go to an individual without presenting charges and saying, hey, look, sign this, We're gonna, you're going to waive all your firearm rights away. Because in some of these instances, the AUSAs, the assistant U.S. state attorneys, they've actually reviewed these cases and they've determined that it's not credible for an actual criminal charge, that there's nothing there to legally pursue. Now, the FBI has been getting a lot of uh, press lately. Do you think this could be politically motivated, uh, being directed by political appointees or possibly even the current uh, administration? Very much so. As we've already seen with the current administration, they are assaulting our Second Amendment rights by any means they can. We just saw legislation passed sadly with bipartisan support, Republicans and Democrats, looking to expand red flag laws across the country. And we've already seen how that's a failure and a violation of due process. But we've seen the, especially with the Biden administration, they're using everything they have up their sleeve to do it. They're going through uh, federal regulation. They're having ATF go after dealers for any inconsequential minutia to strip them of their dealership license. We see the FBI doing this. We've seen um, through the NICS check system, how every delay could be um, uh, made longer and more, te and more tedious for an individual to contest. And we've, even, and we've also seen it on the state level. We've seen in New York, we've seen in California, we've seen states that are already trying to thumb their nose at the U.S. Supreme Court's Bruin decision. This is an assault. Anything that they do, they can do and they will do. And GOA is fighting this tooth and nail, as you already know. We, that's why this is already public. This, we made this public going back to 2019 with an Analand report. Luis Valdez, thank you so much. Thank you very much. It's always a pleasure to be on the air with you guys.